God Empowered Life with Dr. Al Teresa Good Howard, a diligent seeker of the Word of God, student of history, the generals of the faith, understanding that we're standing on their shoulders. It is now our time and our turn to do the greater works of Jesus. She's an apostle, leader of leaders, successful radio personality, speaker with John Maxwell, Les Brown, and best-selling author with Jack Canfield. Her focus is empowering and equipping the next leaders, those who are ready to be used by God, to see miracles, signs, and Hello, I'm Dr. Al Teresa Good Howard with the God Empowered Life Broadcast. Welcome. And today I want to continue with this word that the Lord was speaking and that he is speaking to all of us, getting us prepared for the great comeback. That's right, getting us prepared for the great comeback. You know, I have been speaking about after this. We are preparing for the after this because an after this is coming. And the after this that we're preparing for, it is going to give us a great comeback if we are prepared, if we are ready, if we are positioned in the right place, doing the right things so that we can be able to maximize. And I want to include in this particular word, aim for greater while we're preparing, while we're preparing for the after this, while we're preparing for the great comeback, which in our preparation we talked about last time. Of course, praying, preparing, planning, and being purposeful. And then I add the fifth thing, positioning. We've got to position ourselves in the right place. We've got to position ourselves with the right mindset, position ourselves, of course, in the posture of prayer, position ourselves with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, working on things, preparing things, training, developing while we have this extra time that we may not have had before and we may not have again in the same manner that we may be able to utilize all that we have right now to be able to help propel us into the greater. There's another. We're positioning so that we can be propelled. We are preparing now. We are praying, preparing. We're planning. We're being purposeful. We're positioning ourselves so that we can be propelled to be able to walk out everything that God is going to make available to us to walk out in. There's going to be great opportunities that are going to be coming forth. Great opportunities to be able to do greater than what we've ever done before. To see greater manifested in your life, in your family's life, in your ministry, in your business in your position on your job, or even to even start a business or to excel in your business. Listen, everybody's not going to go under. There are going to be many things that are taking place all around us and that will take place. There will be some that never recover from all of the things that we were experiencing with the coronavirus and the economy being hit like it was. There's going to be a lot of jobs that may not be recovered. There's going to be a lot of things that will have to change in those particular manners. But listen, even if you're a part of those that may have been laid off before or furloughed before, if they had downsized and the company wasn't able to maybe bring you back on, it doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be the demise. It doesn't have to be for your demise. It doesn't have to be for your destruction. It can literally be for your construction. It can literally be where you can go and spend that time in prayer and seeking God and asking God to help you. Lord, what do I do now? What can I do? I may, you may have a family. Family needs to be taken care of. May have bills and all kinds of things. What am I going to do? Listen, God will not leave you helpless and he will not leave you alone. Seek him. He will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. James told us that if we have need of wisdom, to come to him and ask God for wisdom. And he will give to all men liberally and will not uphold it. Uh, uh, will not uphold uh, or hold it back from you. Ask God, what can I do? What should I do? What can I do? What can I do with the rest of my life? Sometimes we can start getting older in age and think that, you know, our time is over or our time is up because we see so many gifted and talented and anointed young people. And I'm glad, I'm thankful, I'm blessed that to be one of the ones that God will allow to be able to help train up the next generations and the next ones that are coming up. And that will be taking the forefront, that will be taking the baton 
and running the next leg of the race for the next years and be doing greater than what some of us have ever done before. We'll be able to impart into them. We'll be preparing them. I'm thankful to be one of those that God has called to be able to help be a part of training the next generations or the next ones that he is going to use regardless to your age. And if that is you and you're looking for someone like myself, if you feel the connection with me to say, I feel that connection. I want, I want you to help train me, equip me for the greater works, to do the greater things, to, to be able to do the things that God is calling. Email me at God empowered life at gmail.com. Email me at God empowered life at gmail.com. And I want to hear from you because I'm, that is what I am called to do. Not only to help those that are already on the front lines, but to help train up those that God is going to be using and utilizing and, and raising up for the days ahead. Because he is raising up a great and mighty army. He is raising up his sons and daughters and want to use you because the whole earth, Romans, uh, Romans began to tell us, uh, Romans 8 began to say the whole earth is groaning. Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. You are some of the sons and, and daughters of God. That the whole earth creation is waiting on you to come forth. Waiting on you to take your place in Christ. Waiting on you to grow and develop in the things of God. To the next levels and greater and greater. Waiting on you to get the heart into. Waiting on you to connect in the realm of the spirit with who you need to connect with so that you can be trained and prepared so that he can use you to do mir miracle signs and wonders, greater works, great exploits to see lives saved and delivered and set free and all kinds of things that he wants to use his people for in all kinds of arenas. It's not just for the church. It's not just for the kingdom. Some of you he's going to raise up and train up to use you in the marketplaces, whether it's in banking, in education, in business. He's going to use you in the media, in the entertainment. Some of you may even use you to develop games for gaming and all kinds of things and use you for all kinds of innovative things and technology and all areas, whatever area there is out there presently. And some he may even give, give even creativity to even discover or to create. He wants to use us. He wants us to be strategically in those places, even in government and in politics and all areas. He wants to use his people. So some of you are some of those people that he is speaking to. That is, if it's starting to resonate on the inside of you, this is the spirit man stirring something up in you, speaking to you, saying you are part of that army. Contact me. Make sure we can connect. Now, everybody I'm not called to. Everyone I may not be able to work with, but there are some great people. There are some people that are listening, watching, that I will be called to, that I will be helping to help you develop and grow in the things of God. Some of you pastors that are looking for the covering for the next of what God is calling for you. Some of you apostles, some of you prophets looking for the right connections, the right coverings to be able to help you in moving into what God is calling for you. Make sure you contact so we can connect at GodEmpoweredLife at gmail.com. But listen. As we're preparing for this great comeback, for whomever you are and wherever you are and what God is saying, wherever you may be, whether you're in ministry or not in ministry, you're a believer, then God says he can use you. He can even use you in your family, in your community, with your friends and loved ones. He wants to empower you so that when the enemy does come and the enemy does come, you will be empowered to be able to fight the good fight of faith, empowered to be able to know how to use the weapon of the word of God against the enemy. The enemy doesn't care who we are and how we are or what we have or don't have. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And no matter what we're doing, no matter who we are, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he'll try to come. But when he comes, you can be prepared. You can be empowered. You can be ready. So when he comes, you're able to keep standing. And having done all to stand, you will be able to keep standing. And so as we're preparing to move forward, begin to pray and see God. God, what is it? What can I do? What do I need to be preparing for? Speak to me. Show me. And he, he'll even speak in dreams to some people. He'll speak and give visions to some people. Some people he'll speak prophetically. Some people he'll use other people like myself and others. And he'll speak through us and give you a word that will be a word of encouragement or a word of confirmation or affirmation or word that will empower you to know what your direction, what your next steps are. Or, or sometimes he'll even speak through when during times of prayer and cause you to see things and give you visions of things. Some of the visions can be in the night. Some of the visions can be in the day. Some of them can be during 
through dreams. Some of them can be through other means. And, and even sometimes you can be, you can even find yourself going into places like it's almost a trance where you can know that you, everything has stood still. And I've had all of these kinds of things happen. And, and it's like everything around you stands still, but yet God is speaking to you or he's showing you something. And then after he finished giving you that impartation or downloading or speaking to you, then all of a sudden everything goes back. Like you begin to start moving again. It's, it's almost like you go into a freeze mode, but yet you're the only one that's still able to see and, 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 and experience what's going on around you and everything else can seem like it has frozen. These are just manifestations of the spirit. These are prophetic manifestations of the spirit. There are many people that are prophets that are called to be prophets that God has called me to train and raise up and, and, and help tr to develop and help equip for what God is calling. And many of you, if you're feeling that prophetic feel or feeling like, okay, I've been having dreams or I've had visions or knowing things before it's happened or, or, or seeing different things or sensing different things or having different kinds of experiences that you may not understand yourself or know how you need to develop in that particular area. Email me also, let me know so that we can, can, can help you in whatever process and whatever stage you're in so that you will be able to walk out what God is calling as a person who from a little child, God used prophetically and I didn't know anything about it. Some of my sons and daughters, many of them are used prophetically in different ways. Some of them are actual prophets and used in different manners. But many times we didn't, didn't know when we were coming up, but now God has raised up some of us who do know to be able to help others of you to be developed in those areas. And I remember knowing things before they happened, seeing things before they happened. And it was only as I got older and once I, I gave my life to the Lord as a teenager, then began to literally start seeing more and more. And God started teaching me things and training me in things. And I began to learn more about the prophetic before even walking in the office of a prophet. Now, I'm not in the office of a prophet now. I have walked in that office. I've been a pastor as well. Now, I am an apostle and I oversee the fivefold ministry and oversee churches and other leaders. But I remember those times in my training grounds and those levels and those areas in which God began to teach me. And I know now it was teaching me through all of those different levels. I've been a teacher, I've been an evangelist, I've been a pastor, been a prophet, now an apostle, and all of those different areas to prepare me to be able to help others that will need to be trained in the days to come. Now I'm walking in those areas, but even the more, even the greater, I still do the things that I'm telling you to do, even in this season, speaking to God, praying, seeking God, listening for his voice, listening for his direction to know what are the next things. That's how I began to start uh, going forth in television, in another area of television. I've been in radio all 30 something years and that's my career in the radio industry. Have done television in many other ways as a profession, but now even expanding even more and more through media and all forms of media, to be able to branch out, to reach more of those of you in the kingdom of God that God is leading me and calling me to reach, to be able to help you prepare and walk out what God is calling for your life. So I'm encouraging you seek the Lord, seek him, aim for greater for it is the time aim acronym for a for advance. I for increase M to maximize every bit of the time that you have, every area of things so that you can aim for the greater that God is calling and preparing for you so that you can make this great comeback that he is going to cause to come back. And those who are prepared and ready will be able to come back into it. Now, let me share this word of the Lord as I finish up where I was last time and then give you another portion of this in preparing you for this great comeback. I was sharing last time from the word of the Lord in first Samuel chapter number 30, talking about David, his people of Ziglag, who had been following the will of God, doing what they were called to do, went out into battle, came back from battle and found out that the enemy had came in the back door and had caused uh, their, their whole camp to be destroyed, burned it, had taken their wives and their children captive, taken all of their possessions. They were in a place of despair because they didn't know what to do. They were in despair because of grief because of their loved ones had been taken and all of the destruction, like many have seen all around us, even when the COVID-19 was taking place and all of the things that were going on all around us and feeling that, that, that flint place of, of despair and hopelessness and not knowing what to do and how to do it. 
And then in the process of it, because of that, they began to mourn and grieve, wanted to stone David to death. David rap went to the house of God because he had to get a word from the Lord. When you're in trouble, when you've got a lot of tragedies or crises or things that are going on beyond your understanding and your control, you've got to get a word from God. David had to get a word from God. Leaders, we have to keep getting words from God, whether it's every week for the messages or to individually lead our congregations or lead the people that God has assigned. We've got to hear from God and not just go off of what we think or believe or even what we've done before. We've got to hear from God. And so David went to the house of God to hear from God. He wrapped himself in the priest's garment, the priest ephod, to hear from God, to inquire of the Lord. And as he inquired of the Lord and God began to give him instruction, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Because when you hear from God, when you get a word from God, when the spirit of the Lord touch you, when, when the presence of God manifests on your behalf, you get a strength. You gain strength that you didn't have before. You, you, you gain that ability to be able to get up again, to rise again, to hope again, to have faith and confidence again. There, there is a power and an empowerment by the spirit that enables you to get back up again and to feel like I can go on. Somebody was feeling like I can't go on any further. Oh, I don't know how to go on any further. And I'm speaking a word to you today. And I pray the spirit of the living God will begin to surround you right where you are. That the spirit of the living God will strengthen you. Just like Jesus, when he found himself at a place that he was getting ready to go to the cross, to have to take on all the sins of the world, take on your sins and my sins and take on all of the curse upon himself so that the curse can be lifted off of us so that we can walk in the things of God and have the relationship with God again. When Jesus found himself at that place, the Bible said he went into the garden of Gethsemane, the place of crushing, the place Gethsemane, the name for the place of crushing, the place where the grapes are crushed and pressed. He was in that place and he was in a place where he, he was, the Bible says he was sweating. Even blood was coming out of his pores that he was in such travail in the spirit and praying, God, take this cup from me. If there's any other way that I can go to the cross, any other way that I can pay the price that needs to be paid so the people can be set free. Lord, take this away from me and let it be another way. Remove this cup from me, but not my will, but your will be done because God didn't answer any answers other than what he had already told him that he had to do. So he had to go through that process. He had to go to the cross. He had to pay the price so that we could be set free. And so when he came back after praying the three times and each time he would say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And it said in over in the book of Luke chapter 22, it said that the angels of the Lord came to Jesus and strengthened him. Why did they strengthen him? They strengthened him for the journey. They strengthened him so that he could finish the course. He could finish the race. They strengthened him so that he can go ahead and drink from the cup and do what was needed so that you and I would be set free. They strengthen him. And so right now I pray that the angels of the living God, the presence of God will come and envelop you, will surround you and strengthen you. Whatever your journey is, strengthen you for the journey, strengthen you for the process that you are having to go through, strengthen you to be able to make it, strengthen you to be able to get up again, to hope again, to trust again, to love again. To believe again, strengthen you to be able to believe for better and brighter days to come your way. Strengthen you to be able to carry the cross that you may bear. Strengthen you to be able to do what you need to do. Strengthen every one of you leaders to be able to lead after the heart of God and after the, 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 the instructions of God, that you will be able to lead God's people. Strengthen every fivefold ministry. Strengthen you apostle, strengthen you prophet, strengthen you pastor, strengthen you evangelist, strengthen you teacher, strengthen you bishops, strengthen you whatever title you hold or position you hold. To strengthen you parents, you mothers, you father, you grandparents, strengthen you uncles and aunts, strengthen you whatever leadership ability, whatever leadership role, strengthen you, even you children that are dealing with so many things, strengthen you teenagers, 
Strengthen you young adults. Strengthen you single people to be able to live saved and single, sold out to God, to be the example to help somebody else. Strengthen you married couples. Strengthen you people of God, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, to strengthen you for whatever your process is. Strengthen you for whatever journey you've got to take. Strengthen you to come up out of this and come to the other side, better, wiser, stronger. Strengthen you to be empowered to the next degree. Strengthen you that you're coming up out of this and where you may have felt like you were uh, uh, defeated. You'll come up out of this and know that I'm not defeated, but I am victorious. They may have counted me out. They may have wrote me off. But I have the presence of God. I've got the spirit of God. I've got the word of God. And I've got the hope of God living on the inside of me. And I'm going to make it through. I just want to encourage somebody today. You can make it through this. You can make it out of this. The enemy may have thrown all kinds of things at you. You may, he may have thrown sickness upon you or a loved one, but you can make it up out of this. You can rise and be healed. You can be de de developed to the next level in your walk with God and see God do great and mighty things on your behalf and see God use you in great and mighty ways. I say again, you can be healed. You begin to declare over your life, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I may have gotten this doctor's report this may have been said and this may have been done or they may say I need to do this or I'm not gonna make it out of this but you declare the word of the Lord I even have on my YouTube channel I've got healing scriptures, healing scriptures on there. So if you have need of healing or know of someone that has need of healing, go to my YouTube channel at God Empowered Life and find those scriptures. And not only do I have the scriptures, but I'm saying the scriptures in a slower manner so you can repeat it after me. Because I know you can't maybe may not be able to memorize the entire thing. But you can repeat after me so that you would have those daily confessions. And no matter how long it takes, for you to go from where you are to being completely mad, the manifestations of healing be completely manifested, you can then use that as a tool, as a weapon against the sickness, as a weapon against the enemy that is trying to come against you and overtake your body and cause you to go down and cause you to go under or even cause you to die. You shall live and not die and declare the work of the Lord. Say that I shall live and not die and declare the work of the Lord. So go to the YouTube channel whether it's for a loved one or yourself. And every day you can play it or as many times as you need to, to keep getting the word of God on the inside of you. Because all I'm saying, I'm giving you the scriptures and I'm telling you where the scriptures are. So even when you're studying the word, you can go back to your Bible and you can study the word yourself. You can see where it is saying it so you can keep on saying it until you see the manifestations. Because I'm telling you, according to the word of the Lord, you're already healed. The Bible lets us know that through Jesus Christ, we are healed we are already healed, but sometimes for whatever reason, it may take different people, different processes or different manners of time before the manifestation is, it, it comes to you. I can tell you when I first gave my life to the Lord, I was a young teenager and I had a, several different things that was going on. I had severe eczema and I had migraine headaches. I had several different things that were going on. And when I began to read the scriptures, I never liked reading in the first place, but once I got saved, my leaders told me I needed to read my Bible every day and I needed to pray. And so I began to do that. And I read in Matthew chapter number eight and began to read about the lepers that came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. You can cleanse us. And God said, and Jesus began to repeat and say back to them, I will be thou clean. And so I believe God is speaking healing over you because he, that, that is his will. His will is to heal. And he is declaring, be thou whole, be thou healed, be like the woman with the issue. Begin to say, if I can just touch whatever it is I need to touch. That's the reason why sometimes we have prayer claws and different things. It is, the power is not in the things. The power is in the word of God and believing. The word is just a point of contact. And as we make the point of contact, we declare in the name of Jesus, if you can just touch, if you can just believe, then you can receive what the word of the Lord says. And so I encourage you today to grab hold to whatever the word is needed for your life or situation. 
If you've got some things going on and you say, well, I'm not sure what scripture would apply. I need some scriptures to help me in this situation. If you email me at God Empowered Life, we will get some scriptures for you that you can stand on. And I am recording even more to be able to put on my YouTube channel. So for every situation, you'll be able to have it so that you can just play it over and over again and re begin to say those things over and over so that you can begin to confess them believe them and receive whatever is needed for your life. But I speak healing over you. I speak deliverance, even praying for salvation for yourself or your loved ones. We are speaking the word of the Lord and we're declaring what the word says. And as you grab hold to it, then we believe and join in our faith with you in agreement that it shall be manifested on your behalf. I've seen God heal me of all kinds of things. I've seen God heal my loved ones and family members and friends from all kinds of things. Even God used me in so many ways to pray and lay hands on the sick and see them recovered. Even had some family members who had died and seen them raised from the dead. Even loved ones of all different kinds of things. But it is not me and it will not be you. But if we can believe the word of God and do what God says. He said, if you believe in my name, you will lay hands on the sick and they recover. So if we believe the word of the Lord and then extend ourselves, step out in faith to do what the word says, then we'll see God manifesting himself. And But somebody may say, but what if it don't happen? But what if it does happen? You say, but what if it don't happen? But what if it does happen? If it doesn't happen, we haven't lost anything. But it, listen, if we never do anything, then we it won't be able to happen. But at least if we step out on faith and do what the word says, we're not talking about what we say. We're talking about what the word says. If you at least pray for them, somebody that you pray for may be healed. If you never pray for them, then they might not get healed. So allow God to use you. Even if you're sick, you can even pray for other people to be healed. And even in the process, you might even receive your manifestation. Because God can do all kinds of things if we are willing and obedient and allow him to work in us and use us. But I wanna, I'm going to keep talking about that comeback because the great comeback is on its way. And God wants us to aim for greater, wants us to advance, increase, and maximize this time. Pray and ask the Lord. What do I need to do at this time of my life, at this place that I'm in, what's going on around me and what I need? What do I need to do? Lord, show me, show me what I need to do. Show me where I need to go. He's, he's even going to give ideas about businesses and all kinds of things to be able to help you, that he'll be able to sustain you just like he did with the widow woman, just like he did in biblical times. God will give instructions and directions. The Bible tells us in second Chronicles 20, 20, if you believe his prophet, you will prosper. If you believe, you will prosper. Listen, we're giving you the instructions. The prophet told the widow woman to go get some barrels and go get those barrels and go fill them up and you'll be able to sell the oil and you'll be sustained. And she did it. She obeyed it. And every time when God would give you something, listen, he will give you something. He will tell you to do something. Some of you might need to even sow a seed into this word that you're hearing today in this ministry. Because, listen, we're going to speak to you what God is saying. And if you would do what God says, even in the process, then God can manifest things. So if for you to sow a seed today, we will make it available for you on the screen. You can, you can sow a seed through, through uh, Cash App at dollar sign, Dr. Al Teresa. It will be there. Sow a seed to help us continue to get the word out, continue to expand this word, to continue to equip the body of Christ so each and every one of us can continue doing what God has called us to do and be able to live this God-empowered life.